Say hi to Trooper. Trooper! That's a Trooper. Hi, Trooper. Hi, Trooper. There's Magic. Hi, Magic. She's a little shy. She's going to be having puppies, hopefully, in a few months. Hi, Magic. A little protective right now. So we'll leave her alone. <clears throat> but this is the area you can kind of see, hopefully. I'm walking up towards it right up in front of me. Got a post here. And I just kind of paste this off, and I paste it off diagonally, and it's fairly close to square. I'll get a, I gotta get 250 foot tape out here before I actually lay it out. But got to get rid of this apple tree that the beavers cut down. Little pain in the mix. Um, we have a big reservoir that's over on the left side, borders our property to the north, and the outlet of it comes down through here. And the beavers dammed this up horribly um, quite a few years ago. Quite a few, probably six years ago now. And you can see this apple tree was always doing well, but you can see how they just definitely chopped it off. That's a pretty good sized apple tree, but um, I got a new toy coming in the mail. My wife got me for my 50th birthday. It's my Artillion Grapples coming in the mail. That will should make pretty quick work of this. I also got a new DeWalt cordless chainsaw. Um, I have a steel uh, MS260 Pro chainsaw for bucking up wood and everything, but lemon stuff and just real quick chopping a couple things off like this. I think the electric, being able to pick it up, hit it and go and set it back down, I think is gonna be awesome. It's gonna be so much um, easier to do when you're limbing and just trimming up stuff around the yard. And I also got a 15 foot extension pole saw that takes the same battery to walk again. So that I got with some money I got for Christmas. Looking forward to using them. So, but we're gonna get this all cleaned out. You can see right behind me here, we got the other post. So from there, over to right about in there, um, that's about 75 foot. And then again, from here, all the way down this fence line. And it's hard to see the post up ahead of me, but all the way down to here, this is about 120 foot down. So I was assuming a, approximately 15 foot spacing on most of the trees that I'm gonna get. Um, definitely gonna have to have, I, I'm debating on whether to put a fence in here or not. Um, I don't wanna have to run electric over to here underground and do all that, but I definitely need to keep the deer out there. Like, there's like a deer highway that runs back through here. It's nice during hunting season, but not so much when you're trying to grow trees. So you can see a little bit back in there how the creek is. There was an old dam um, that was, there was one here there's another one down there, and then there was a third one that was farther down. Um, I got some nuisance permits and was able to get permission to get those yanked out and get that cleared out. We got all the beavers gone. Um, we got to get some more stuff taken in there so they won't come back as easy next time. So, But yeah, I'm kind of excited. This is pretty undulating in here. I'm still trying to decide if I want to uh, mow this down tight and rototill it up and get the land plane and try to level some of this or how I want to do it. So still thinking about that i think i might just mow it um it's not horrible we have mowed this in the past we just raised it up a couple of notches but even doing it with a brush hog would work just to keep everything down and i think for this year we're just going to take in uh i saw some really good ideas about taking concrete mesh wire cutting off i think that was country view acres i saw um evan doing it on there take some of that you cut it off and you can roll it up and i'm going to make some tree cages that are about four foot in diameter i think for this year that'll keep everything the deer away from my trees and let them start growing hi trooper so that's what we're looking at but got some apple trees in there it's nice it does bring the deer and the wildlife around um, i want to get some of these scrub trees taken out because we do have kind of a wetland back in there but we really can't see it from the house so i'm really looking forward to again the grapple coming i'll be able to chop those off with the saw get them pushed or even dig them right up with the bucket maybe well it's back or whatever however i get rid of them but being able to clamp onto them with that artillery and grapple and get them out of here, I think I'm gonna be able to clear a lot of this up and just make it look a lot better. We'll be able to have better view. There's a lot of geese and ducks. We get deer come down, drink from the stream. Um, it's just pretty to look at out your back door, so. Woo. Never enough hours in the day. It's about 8.30. I got five of the holes dug for the 13 fruit trees. I got everything laid out. I got it mowed down and I'm just coming through and starting to plant a little later than I wanted to but I had to get the grass mowed it's gonna rain for the next couple of days and it was like a hay field in the backyard so they don't want the dogs getting any more susceptible to ticks than they probably already are so wanted to get that done so we're gonna I'll grab some video here digging a couple holes but then we're gonna go up and start mixing the 
topsoil that I got with some of the local soil and then a little bit of manure and get it uh, aged manure sorry and then we'll get that put back and we'll get the trees all tamped in and get them planted tonight all right so we're making good progress planting the fruit trees I've got three planted so far it's about 10 after 9 I started digging the holes at I can't remember after 8 o'clock or around 8 o'clock so try to get the shed off my face there um, but yeah, it's not going too bad. I ended up digging the holes. I don't know if you can really see in this picture. Let me see if I can get down. There's one of the holes, but it's, and I can stand it and you can see it's, it's way, way too deep. Um, I should have really paid attention more to see, should have paid attention more to see how big the roots were. So there's one of the roots. I mean, you can kind of see it. This is the Red Haven peach. Oh, actually, I got to put a peach in here, so I'll do this one. Um, but that, that's one of the smaller ones. I mean, this is probably... Here, let me see if I can just pull all these out. It might be easier. So you can see that's the roots for, like, six trees. Seven, seven trees. So, I mean, it's not, I could fit all these in that hole. Like, I definitely made the holes way too big. So I'm, and it's not bad. I'm just, of course, you're looking at my feet. It's not too bad. I'm just raking some of the dirt back in. Um, and throwing it in the bottom of the hole to pack it. And then I have a mixture of topsoil that I got, which actually has some composted material in it, along with earth. And then I got some um, aged cow manure that I'm mixing in with that. So once I get the tree to the level I want it at, I'll put the, you know, put the roots down, then I pack the mixture of the topsoil and the manure around it. Then I just fill it back in over the top with the earth that I pulled out of the hole. I'm leaving it down a couple inches for now. I can always come back and put more dirt on it. But it's also gonna allow me to put some mulch in there. So this graft, where they grafted inks, I got semi-dwarf trees. So this graft needs to stay, the ground level's about right here. And we said make sure this stays about two or three inches above. The problem is, is if this graft gets in below the ground, it can start shooting roots off of its own, and then the tree itself will grow, and it will actually grow into a full-size tree instead of being a semi-dwarf. So that's why you want to keep that, um, this above it. I don't think it'll kill the tree, but you're not going to end up with the type of tree that you want. I don't think I could have finished that up any better. It's, I don't know what time it is. 10.22 at night, so, you know, if you can hear it or not. It was barely sprinkling on, just kind of spitting on me a couple of times. And I was just finishing putting in the last tree and it started raining. Of course, it would have been a little quicker had I, um, had I been sent the right order. Um, my fault. Well, my fault for not looking at the order before I went and tried to plant everything. Um, I was supposed to end up with two cherries, three peaches, two pears, and six apple trees. And they shorted me an apple tree, and they gave me an extra cherry, sweet cherry tree. So I had five apples and three cherries. However, the way that I laid everything out, I had a grid of six apple trees that I wanted to plant. And then as I was going through it, all of a sudden I'm like, oh, so in the middle there, I have a cherry tree and then an apple. And then, so the first, and, and, and the first, I said I could go five wide by nine deep. Um, that didn't work because I got to that last hole, which is the closest one to the creek that I was saying. 
And by the time I got back there, the hole was half filled with water. And I got another hole 15 feet from there. None of the other holes had water in it. And there is a slight little dip where that hole is. So that water, like I said, I didn't think the water table was too awfully low. So all the other holes had zero water in them. Um, I sat there and I went through and planted them. So I think I'll be fine there. So I'm going to only go four wide, but that's still going to give me enough room for 36 trees if I go all the way down. It, it's a lot of fruit trees if I ever even plant that many. So, um, but yeah, hope you just enjoyed watching me do some work around the property today. Get those trees planted. It's late. I'm going to go to bed. It's almost 1030. I'm going to shower, hit, hit the hay. I got church 830 in the morning. So it's going to be a, be a good night. I'm sure I will sleep well tonight, but I hope everyone has a good night. Take care. God bless.